So today we'll continue discussing properties of uh, Hermitian symmetric matrices. Um, in particular, um, we were looking at um, several interlacing theorems. And uh, we, at the end of the previous class, we stated the following theorem. Um, so A in C to the N cross N cross N is a Hermitian symmetric matrix. And uh, Y is a vector in C to the N. And uh, A is a real number. Then we defined A hat to be the matrix A, Y, Y Hermitian, and A, which is an N cross N plus one cross N plus one matrix. Then as usual, we arrange the eigenvalues uh, in increasing order. So let the eigenvalues of A and A hat be denoted by lambda i. This is i equal to 1 to n and lambda hat i this is i equal to 1 to n plus 1 respectively um, and um, and assume that they are arranged in increasing order So that lambda one is less than or equal to lambda two, less than or equal to lambda n, and lambda hat one, lambda hat two, lambda hat n plus one. Then lambda hat one is the smallest eigenvalue, which is less than or equal to lambda one, lambda hat two, lambda two, lambda n minus one, lambda hat n, lambda n, lambda hat n plus one. So the when you border a matrix like this with y, y Hermitian and A, the smallest eigenvalue of A, A hat, is going to be less than or equal to the smallest eigenvalue of A. So by bordering, you cannot increase the smallest eigenvalue. And similarly, the largest eigenvalue of A hat is going to be bigger than or equal to the largest eigenvalue of A, so that you can't increase, uh, you, you can't decrease the largest eigenvalue by bordering it with another matrix, uh, another vector and uh, scalar in the bottom right corner. OK, so that's what the result says. We didn't uh, prove this the previous time, so now we'll write out the proof. And it's again a sort of easy consequence of the current fisher theorem, but uh, again, the proof is a, a little bit clever in my opinion. So, uh, so let's see how it goes. Um, so let k be an integer so we'll prove this inequality sequence of inequalities for some k so take lambda k and uh, show that it is uh, less than or equal to lambda hat k and uh, sorry it's greater than or equal to lambda hat k and less than or equal to lambda hat k plus one that's what we'll show so such that one less than or equal to k less than or equal to n. So we will show that lambda hat k 
is less than or equal to lambda k is less than or equal to lambda hat k plus 1. So let um, we'll define x hat to be equal to. So keep in mind that we have to deal with uh, matrices and vectors of both dimension n and n plus 1. So we'll write it like this x and zeta. OK, this is in C to the n plus 1 where x is in c to the n and zeta is just a complex number okay and similarly we'll define w hat i to be equal to w i and w i tilde which is again in C to the n plus 1 with W i belonging to C to the n and W i tilde belonging to C. Now we use uh, the Courant Fisher theorem. So in order to show, so we'll, we'll first show this, for example. So in order to show this, we want to show that lambda hat k plus 1 is greater than or equal to lambda k. And so lambda hat k plus 1 by Kuran Fisher theorem is the minimum. So usually in order to show lower bounds, we want to show that lambda hat k plus 1 is lower bounded by lambda k. Uh, we'll use the min max form of the Kuran Fisher theorem. So this is the minimum over w hat 1 um, all the way up to w hat n plus 1 minus k plus 1 all belonging to c to the n plus 1 of the maximum x hat not equal to 0 x hat in c to the n plus 1 and x hat perpendicular to all these other vectors, w hat 1 all the way up to w hat. So n plus 1 minus k plus 1 is n minus k. And the objective function is the same, x hat Hermitian A, x hat divided by x hat Hermitian x hat. Now, um, this is greater than or equal to, so this is where the slightly clever part of the proof comes in. So the min over the same thing, w hat 1 up to w hat n minus k, um, the maximum of x hat not equal to 0, x hat and c to the n plus 1, and x hat perpendicular to w1 hat up to w n minus k, I'll throw in an extra constraint, x hat perpendicular to e n plus 1. This is the last column of the n plus 1 cross n plus 1 identity matrix. So if I throw in an extra constraint here, the maximum achieved by the same objective function, x hat Hermitian a x hat divided by x hat Hermitian x hat, if I throw in an extra constraint, I may not be able to achieve as high a maximum as this. And so whatever this will achieve, and on top of that, I'm minimizing with respect to these w hats. So by inserting an extra constraint over here, this, this quantity ends up becoming at most this quantity. So uh, this is a lower bound, okay? Now, these x hats are all perpendicular to E n plus 1, which means that the last coordinate of x hat is always equal to 0. And so if I account for that, uh, while searching over this space of x hat belonging to C to the n plus 1, the only components of x hat that are still under my control are the first n components. The n plus 1 component doesn't matter. And similarly, if I say x hat should be perpendicular to all these vectors, it is sufficient to search over vectors where the first n components of x hat are orthogonal to the first n components of w hat uh, 1, w hat 2 up to w hat n minus k. 
So I can simply reduce this down to uh, an n, uh, n length vector uh, related constraint. And further, if I've made the last entry of x hat equal to zero, um, this is, sorry, this is a hat here, okay? I mean, that's the application of the kuran fisher theorem. It's not A. I mean, A, you cannot multiply with A because this is an n plus one length vector anyway. Um, and further, if the last entry of x hat is equal to zero, if you go back to the definition of A hat and see, if you multiply by this by a vector x hat Hermitian and right multiply by x hat, but the last entry of x hat equals zero, that will kill all these components. So that's the same as taking x, which is the first n entries, and doing x Hermitian ax. So I can rewrite this, whatever is over here, I can rewrite uh, all of this as exactly equal to the minimization of w1 up to wn minus k in c to the n, so these were in C to the n plus one of the maximum over x not equal to zero, x in C to the n, x perpendicular to w1 through wn minus k. And I don't need this constraint now because I've already accounted for the fact that the last entry of x hat equals zero in writing out these constraints. So it's, this is just x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x. And by the Kuron Fisher theorem, this is exactly equal to lambda k. So that proves the first half of the result. And similarly, if I take lambda hat k, and now I need to show that this is less than or equal to lambda k. So I will use my starting point will be the max min version of the Kuron Fisher theorem. So max goes over w hat one through w hat k minus one in c to the n plus one, the minimum over x hat not equal to zero, x hat in c to the n plus one, and x hat perpendicular to all these vectors, w hat one through w hat k minus one, x hat Hermitian a hat x hat divided by x hat Hermitian x hat. Okay, this is the just Kuron Fisher theorem for lambda hat k. And this is less than or equal to, I'll use the same trick as before. So this is the max over the same thing. The min over x hat not equal to zero, x hat in c to the n plus one, x hat perpendicular to w1 hat through w hat k minus one. And now I throw in one extra constraint, which is x hat is perpendicular to E n plus one. And now I'm throwing in this extra constraint on a minimization problem. So the minimization problem, x hat Hermitian a hat x hat divided by x hat Hermitian x hat. So now with this minimization problem, I may not be able to achieve as low a minimum as I would do here because this is a more constrained problem. And that's why this inequality goes like this as less than or equal to. And now that I've made x hat perpendicular to en plus one, that means the last entry of x hat equals zero. So I can then uh, rewrite this as this is the maximum over, and if the last entry of x hat equals zero, this can be reduced to an orthogonality between x and w1 through wk minus one. So then I can do a maximization over w1 up to w k minus one in C to the N, and the minimum over X not equal to zero, X in C to the N, and X perpendicular to W one through W k minus one, X Hermitian AX over X Hermitian X, which is exactly equal to lambda K by the Kuran Fisher theorem for the matrix A and finding lambda K. So that's that's the proof. Okay, now um